A community in Oregon is mourning today after a gunman killed nine people at a small community college in Roseburg. The shooter died in a shootout with police. Investigators are trying to figure out what motivated Chris Harper Mercer to attack. Former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole joins us now. Thank you for being here. Mercer, as you know by now, has been described as reclusive, antisocial, wore the same clothes every day. Is there a profile here for mass shooters? There really is not uh, a single profile of a mass shooter. Um, there are differences between all these cases that we've seen over the years. But having said that, I will say that um, there are groups of, of these individuals who do share common characteristics, common motivations, um, and common personality traits. And from my perspective, based on what we know so far, and that may change because a lot of the information just hasn't been made available, this is someone that I refer to as a mission-oriented shooter. He had um, evidence of a great deal of planning beforehand, and his, uh, his mission was to go into that school and kill as many people as possible. He brought excessive ammunition, excessive firepower, um, and nothing was going to stop him. So, and that's what is actually referred to as a mission-oriented shooter. Mary, can we talk a little bit about the role of uh, social media? It appears that he went online, maybe searching for an online community. There was various posting, posts that he had put up, and it sort of reminded me of some of the other shooters, the high-profile shooters. I think of Elliot Roger. I don't know if you recall, he had uh, posted a series of videos on uh, YouTube. He also had a sort of a manifesto that he had posted. Adam Lanza also sought out uh, like-minded people online. I'm wondering if, you know, social media can almost help to encourage an individual, push them over the edge. Well, there's absolutely no question about that. And, and we know that. And for those of us that continue to work in this field, it's very concerning. And, and it's frightening for the public to understand this concept. But the purpose of social media in these kinds of cases, specifically with um, the ones that you've mentioned, they will leak information beforehand of their intentions to go and shoot a lot of people and kill them the next day. People don't do that if they're ashamed of what they're going to do, if they're embarrassed about what they're going to do. They're actually excited and they want the attention and they want the notoriety and then certainly they want that after the act. So if they're putting it out there on social media, now what we're seeing, something that we didn't see 20 years ago, is that there are other people that are watching that that are helping to normalize this behavior and that's really a very dangerous phenomenon. Mary Ellen, how about the signs? There are so many people that suffer from depression, but what are the warning signs when you go from depression to snapping and looking to take someone's life? This is not snapping behavior, and that's very important. This was behavior that was thought about and fantasized in his head probably for years. The ability to think about other human beings as being objects, to develop that degree of hatred, to turn people into your enemy, that takes years. It probably started in his brain when he was a little boy. Then you add on to that a fascination with weapons. Um, the way you cope is to, is to act out violently or to hurt other people. You can see the evolution takes a long period of time. Um, some of the warning behaviors can include what I just mentioned. It's this leakage. It's telling ahead of time, forecasting what you're going to do because you are actually proud of it and you're excited for it to get started. It seems like Mercer was pretty close to his mother. It almost, based on some of the stuff we've read, appeared as if she operated at a, as a buffer between him and the, the rest of the world. And some of these other shooters, you know, they certainly had parents who were close to them, friends who were close to them, who didn't see that it was going to go this far. What can, can family members do? What are some of the things that family members should be looking out for? I'll just give you a couple of examples, and I know it's very difficult if you're very close to someone, you love them, and you never anticipate that they could do something like this. But if you see someone who has these traits that I've mentioned, they lack compassion, they lack empathy. These are personality traits that would have gone back for years. They talk about their hatred of the world, their despair, they're nihilistic, 
the world is meaningless. And then they evolve into um, the sense of being isolated, fascination with weapons. And then it becomes, what's really important is a fascination with other prior mass shootings and sort of an, uh, an allegiance to an, or an admiration. Those are all progressive warning signs that should really uh, be concerning to a parent or to a friend and intervention is necessary at that point. It's, it's critical at that point. Right. Former FBI profiler Mary Ellen O'Toole, thank you. You're welcome.